huh? Look at this. Isn't this great? Nice work, George. I did this all myself. I rented a truck. I packed a van with items that could stack safely and brought her down to the shop. Then the real work started. I soon realized I was not going to get those carts up into the truck without some catastrophe accompanying them. The ramp was too slippery. I couldn't get a grip. I was so close, but I just couldn't get it up. This was not a problem for me. I never go anywhere without at least one block and tackle system. Success. Of course, unloading here was much easier. I took it slow and cautious. No issues. Let me give you a tour. Let's start up front. This area, what I would consider a dead area. Obviously, we got the entrance here. And uh, I put these uh, panels up, these wall panels I built. I think I'm going to use it as a paint booth. Not for spraying, but for rolling. Rolling and sanding, rolling and sanding, rolling and sanding. That's what I'm going to do here. Along the side of the van I'm building, I got a dead corridor. See, this is a dead corridor. I've got to keep it. I've got to have access to the van. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, green screen up on the walls. Then we could have some fun with some of the, the filming I do inside that van. Now, there's another dead corridor over here. This one, again, I've got to have it. I'm pulling in my pleasure way. I can only pull in so far to the wall. So I'll use this for storage. You always have to have a little bit of storage, right? So everything's down here. I got everything here. And as you know, everything's on wheels. So I can move it around if I need to. I'm thinking this is a good starting point. The configuration of where everything is I think this is good. Hey, George. Not you. Well, you're out here bloviating. I'm inside editing. I think you should come and see what I got going on. All right. I'll be right in. Excuse me. confession to make. I have a frugal side. Oh yeah, yeah, I do. And it takes hold of me at the worst I set up two separate workstations. This one, in my pleasure way, has been acoustically treated for best audio quality. The other, out on the floor, is primarily for editing, research, and social media, but not narration. Yeah, it's working out. This is working out pretty well. This is the first time we're doing voiceovers this is the first time I'm doing voiceovers on the road. Me. I'm here alone. Just me and my imagination. Look at this table. So now I have a roof over my head. I'll be warm in the winter and cool in the summer. First order of business, a work table. A big one. I have another confession to make. I have a frugal side. Oh yeah, yeah I do. And it takes hold of me at the worst times. For some reason, I was not going to buy two 4x4s for the table legs. One 8-footer cut four ways comes to just about two foot per leg. That should be fine. So I cut all the players and screwed it all together. I ended up using my 2x4 cutoffs above the wheel plates to gain another inch and a half in height on the table. So there was zero waste in building this table. Zero. If you try to tip all the weight of the table directly onto the wheels, you could compromise the connection. So I used some leverage to take the stress off the wheels.
My 4x8 plywood sheets had to be cut in thirds at the Home Depot so I could get them in my pleasure way. Here, I'm grain matching the cuts so they fit nice and tight on the table. Then I added a full sheet of masonite. It's smooth, really smooth. It's a great surface to work on. Line it all up nice and square and screw it all down. That crooked piece of foam board on the garage door has been whispering to me since I got here. Time to silence that demon. Oh, this is going to be a good one. I can't wait. I've been waiting for this. There's no cooking involved. That's why I'm over here. I got the stove closed up and this is where I'm doing my work. Here's what you need. You need an apple and you need an onion and an artichoke. Listen, stay with me. Here's one more thing you need. Slice off one can of tuna. Let's go through that again. There's five ingredients. I've only talked about four. An apple, an onion, and an avocado with a can of tuna. And then you're going to bathe it in whatever it is you like. You want a salad dressing, you want Marie's dip, anything. Whatever you want to do, but you got to give it a nice bath. I'm going to use this uh, Dijon honey mustard dressing. Brianna's Dijon honey mustard dressing. That's what I'm using because I was attracted to the label and the colors. So that's how I did it. Now, we got to get all this stuff diced. Everything's got to be diced in order to start. Ready? Huh? How about that? Now, you can adjust this to taste. I used a half an onion. It was a big white onion. So I used half of it. I used one apple, one avocado. You can adjust to taste. That's the beauty of this recipe. Recipe. Now, you got everything diced. Now you gotta find a way to get it into this container. This is, a, we call this a vessel. You need to get everything into this vessel. All right? Uh, I need a, oh! I know what I could use. Hang on. This might work. Let's see. Yeah, I need a shovel. That's really what I would like. You know, that's what comes to mind. A shovel. But, you get the idea. What we're trying to do is get everything into the vessel. Oh, hell with this. Listen. This is how I would do it if the camera wasn't on, so it's how I'm going to do it, okay? Full disclosure, you get what you get with me. Ah. All right, now, your tuna, I leave the water in. It's a solid white albacore packed in water. I leave it in there. Throw that in there. Get it in. This is fresh caught at some point. All right. This is starting to look good now. You can tell. Now you get your avocado. Now here's how, I mean, you probably all have some fancy tools to get the avocado out of the, the skin here. But this is how I do it. I scrape it all out of there. I get every little bit. You do know how to get the pit out, right? You give it a ding -a -da and a twist. And that's the end of the pit. That's right. I know what I'm doing here. Get this all in there. All right? Now, you got to go through here. This is what we call pureeing the ingredients. That's what I'm doing now. This is a puree process. Apple half an onion, avocado, can of tuna, all right? Believe me when I tell you, stop making that face. This is gonna be good. 
I already had this. This is a tried and true tested recipe. All right, now, you get your stuff, whatever you decided, okay? Like I said, in my case here, I'm throwing on some of this Dijon mustard. I don't know how much. But we'll know as soon as we get to the blending stage. All right? Now, um, you should have a, a lid for your vessel. This is a hell of a time to be telling you that. You need a lid on the vessel. Okay, because that's you need that for the blending stage. So you get your lid on. That's right. You know where this is headed. You give it a little, a little of this, a little of that. See, vigorous, vigorously blend your ingredients, and then take a look at it after. <gasps> It just so happens I hit the right amount of stuff. Oh, my goodness. All right, now comes the next part. At this point, I would put this in the fridge and let it soak overnight. Let all those flavors and juices and just let it happen, okay? In the fridge. But the next step, since it's a relatively clean process as well, believe me, now, what I'm going to tell you is, uh, I love sushi. This is not sushi, but I can't always afford sushi. So I would call this the poor man's sushi, okay? Because it's got the tuna, I call it tushi, tushi. Tushy. You put some of the. Oh, I just nailed it. You put some of this on there. And now you know. You know what's next. We're going to roll this up. And then you can eat it like that. You could eat it like a burrito. Or, again, if you load these things up, wrap them in saran wrap put them in the fridge overnight and then they kind of become one with the the thing then you slice them now we got fresh tushy fresh tushy tushy try this i'm telling you go back play it over get these ingredients right this is delicious this could be a nice little sandwich treat you can make as many as you want. Look, you can feed two people twice here. This is delicious. There's something about this combination of ingredients. All right, I've had enough of this foo-foo decorating. I'm in control here and I say it's time we get back to building that van. We'll see you next week.